Hello, in this video we're going to take a detailed look at the syntax for the console. As with previous videos, if you're following along on a console or HOG4 PC, please load the show for video 2.3. There are a lot of things to remember when learning a control system, and so a set of simple to follow rules that can be applied to everything you do can make remembering the order that keys need to be pressed much easier. It's the map for the console. There are five very important words to remember with HOG4, and I always recommend to anyone I train that they put some tape across the console and write them down. Source, mask, command, options, destination. Before we look at some examples, let's break all that down. First of all, source. This is where you're getting information from. So, for example, if you're copying a queue, then the queue you are actually copying would be the source and should be entered into the command line before anything else. If no source is specified, then the console defaults to the active editor, which is usually the programmer. Next we have the mask, which you can think of as a way to filter the information. There are fixture and group masks, as well as kind masks, such as colour. After a mask, we enter the commands, such as record or copy. After a command is pressed, the options toolbar opens, and various different options can be chosen, such as whether to track forwards, or to instead make a queue only change by deselecting the forwards button. Finally, destination, which is the object that will be affected by the command. As with source, if no destination is specified, then certain default behaviour will occur depending on the command used. Of course, you don't need to type all five pieces of the command line syntax all of the time. Let's start by looking at the simplest example, record, enter. I will select my two solar frame 750s which will light the stage right lectern, bring them to full and apply the stage right lectern position and also my tungsten CTO colour. I'm not going to enter a source and so the console will default to using the values in the programmer. I'm also not going to specify a fixture or a kind mask which means that all fixtures that have values in the programmer will be recorded. So the first thing I need to press is the command, record. I don't need to apply any options, and so I just need to choose my destination. I can do this by pressing a choose key. If that choose key had already been the chosen master, I could have simply pressed record, enter, and it would have defaulted to recording a new queue on the chosen master. Since this master was empty, a new list and Q1 is created. And so I'll clear the programmer, play back the queue, and bring up the master. So that was a pretty long explanation for a very basic command, but by understanding the syntax, we can apply the same rules to do more complex tasks. Let's look at another example. I want to change just the colour of the floor buttons in Q1, but I don't want the look of Q2 to be changed. Currently, the only reason the lights stay red in Q2 is because the colour value is tracking through from Q1. There's no actual colour value stored in Q2 for those fixtures. Therefore, if I just change the colour to blue in Q1, the lights would also be blue in Q2. This is where options come in. So I'll select the lights and put them at full so we can see them more clearly, and then make them blue in the programmer as well. Once again, there's no need to specify a source, but this time I just want to store colour. So I type colour as my mask, and then merge, followed by the option of deselecting forwards, which makes it a queue-only change. Then I specify the destination as being Q1. This will default to the chosen master, which currently is my main show list. If I press Enter, and then clear the programmer. When I go into Q1, we can see that the buttons have been changed to blue. But when I play into Q2, because I made that Q only change, the buttons return to being red. Moving on to prepare for my final example, with any show where I have what I'd consider as my main queue list, which is currently on master 10, I would want to make sure I have all my fixtures and all their parameters being controlled from that list. This means that when I want to stop values tracking through a queue, I'm able to block that queue by putting all the values at their current state into the queue. 
any changes then made before that queue will never track through. So to prepare for that, I would make a queue 0.1 with all fixtures at their default values. I'll release all playbacks by pressing pig and release. And then select my all fixtures group, followed by touch, which as we saw in a previous video, brings all of the parameters for those fixtures into the programmer. I'm going to record these now as Q0.1 on the main list. So record 0.1, enter. Alternatively, I could have typed record 10 slash 0.1, which would have specified master 10 as the destination if it hadn't already been the chosen master. So you might still be wondering why I've bothered to do that. So hopefully this will clear that up. Let's open the editor for Q1 by typing Q1 open. I can either see just what is stored in Q1 or I can press show state and then see all the values that have tracked through from the previous queues as well. If I move forwards to look at Q2 by holding down the Q key and pressing next, again, we can see either just what is stored in Q2 or the state of Q2, which is a combination of those Q2 values plus all of the values that have tracked through from earlier in the list. I'll close this editor now. I want to create a Q4, which will be my after dinner speeches queue. And I want my starting point to be how Q2 looks. So if I type Q2 as my source, copy as my command, and four as my destination, then let's have a look at what has been created. If I open up the editor for Q2 with Q2 open and look at the content of just that Q, we can see if I move forwards to look at Q4, Q next and Q next again, that all of the information that was in Q2 has been copied to Q4. I'll close the editor and then go to Q2. When I play through Q3, we can see that the fixtures change color and the back truss solar frames change position. When I play into Q4, although the colors go back to how they were in Q2, the position has stayed as it was in Q3. This is because Q4 also has values tracking through that changed in Q3. I'm going to remove Q4 now and then do the process again. Q4, delete. This time I'm going to use the option of state. So Q2, copy, press the option of state, four, enter. Now when I go to Q2 and then play into Q3, we see the fixtures change position. When I play into Q4, then the fixtures return to exactly what their state was in Q2. Now I've copied not just Q2, but all the values for the entire rig that had tracked through from Q's 0.1 and Q1. Therefore, it doesn't matter what was changed in Q3 or what I go on to change after this in Q2 or Q3. Q4 will always look exactly the same as Q2 does now because I've copied the state. So I've shown some progressively complex commands, but the key thing is to remember that no matter how complex or basic the task is, the command line syntax can be followed in exactly the same way. Going back to something as simple as moving a group in the group directory, then once again, just remember source, command, destination. Select the group, press move, and press where you want to move it to. Hopefully this has helped explain not just what to press, but why they are pressed in the order they are. There are far too many possible examples to show you, and so by showing you the rules to follow, you should be able to apply this now to whatever you need to achieve. In the next video, we're going to take a more detailed look at palettes.